everybody, it's Tamara from Prairie Town Girl here on Etc. Eyes, and I'm outside again today because it's a gorgeous day outside. Um, and I was in the garden all morning and I was pulling up weeds and getting rid of all the stuff that shouldn't be there. <laughs> and I ended up with this big bucket full of weeds and I was about to throw it out and then I thought, hey, this would be great to add to uh, my handmade paper. So this afternoon, I decided to make some paper. So I'm going to walk you through, I'm, first I'm going to show you everything you need. I'm going to walk you through the process and then, um, oh, hello Katya. <laughs> uh, we'll, I will let the paper dry in the sun all day and I should be able to show you the result um, at the very end. So um, you need quite a bit more setup uh, to do handmade paper than we did last week with our tea stain paper, which was basically just dunking your paper in the tea and putting it out to dry. For this, you need a lot of stuff. So that's the first thing I'm going to walk you through. Okay, so one of the main pieces of equipment that you need is a blender. And I got this old blender at the thrift shop for a whopping $6. Um, I might have even gotten it on a sale day, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but just get an old one. Uh, you don't need anything fancy. Um, I like to, um, when I used to get all my bills in paper, I would always shred them all because I'm super paranoid. And once you shred paper, you can't really go into the um, recycling because it, it it's just not good for the recycling machines apparently. So um, I keep all mine and I've got three big bags and that's going to last me for ages and ages. And I use that to remake into new paper. Today we're going to use, um, I've got some weeds and leaves and things. And then I also got a little thing here of um, pine needles, which I have tried before and they look really cool in the paper. So we're going to use those as additives. I've got a big plastic tote here. It's only about a third full of water. It's just clean water for now. <laughs> um, so let's go over to this side. Of course, you need some forms to pull your paper up on. Um, this is a proper um, form. You can just make them too though. This one I just made from a frame and I, I stapled some screening on top. But you, you should, you could do it with just that one piece, but it is much better and easier to make your paper when you have um, that secondary piece that creates the shape of the paper. So I'm just, I'm gonna use this one today because I like the size uh, for my junk journals. I also have a huge stack of, whoops, sorry. Um, I've got pieces of felt which you can get really cheap at the fabric store or the dollar store. I've got a whole stack of like J cloths, um, some old newspapers that will help soak stuff up while I'm drying it out. I've got a smaller bin here, also about halfway full of water, and I've been soaking my paper in there. So I like to soak it first before we put it into the blender. Um, so I just take my strips and I rip them in halves or thirds or whatever just to make the pieces a little bit smaller and a little bit easier for the blender. And um, I've also, also got a sponge and um, this is another some sort of sponge thing. <laughs> um, you need that because before before we lay it out to dry, we need to soak out as much water as possible um, after we've pulled it. I've got this little spatula thing here. Um, sometimes I need to use it. Sometimes it. Sometimes if you're just really patient and you keep soaking the water out, it, it just all will work. So, um, so I think that's my whole setup. I also, well, I do have one other little bucket over here with a little bit more water. That's some rain water I got from my rain barrel. You could just have your hose handy if you're outside like I am. Um, I like to do it outside because it does get messy <laughs> and it is kind of a big setup. It's just easier for me because I don't have a place inside the house that I could do all of this. So 
that's why I like to do it out here so um, yeah so that's my setup so let's let's get started before I get going I also meant to mention um, because we're outside <laughs> there might be some extra noises um, as in sirens and things I don't live in the best neighborhood in town it used to be a wonderful neighborhood and um, over the last 15 years or so um, things have changed and so <laughs> from time to time there are um, people who are a little noisy there are uh, often sirens that kind of thing there's an ambulance station not too far from here so I will try to make sure we don't hear as, too much of that but just warning you it might come up from time to time okay so the first thing I'm going to do is take my paper that's been soaking and I'm going to put it into my blender um, I probably have a little bit too much water in here. You really need only about five or six cups of water. Um, you can even tear your paper as you're putting it in there. All we want to do is break down the fibers of the paper. So just put in, oh, I don't know, the equivalent of like two or three sheets of paper. Don't fill it too too much because um, it'll be too much for your motor probably and then just um, pulse it whoops and you're just trying to get basically a slurry where everything's broken down. I'm gonna do one, a couple more pulses. If you can really see that, it's just like a milky, glompy mess. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is put it in our big um, tub of water and just gently, gently let it go in there. And I like to put in probably two or three of these before I'm going to pull any paper because um, if you pull it now it'll be too thin and you wouldn't really be able to get anything out of it. So I'm going to do a couple more of these and then we'll start pulling. Okay, so we've got um, our little slurry going here. I think there's enough in there to, to pull some paper out of that. Um, I think what I'm going to do before we start though, I'm going to add some, some of my weeds, <laughs> but when they're in the paper, I think they will probably look like flowers. So I've got, um, I don't want the stems, but the leaves and the flowers here. put quite a bit in. Make sure you've got them sort of in smaller chunks. You don't want anything too bulky. natural materials is that um, sometimes they just go brown and kind of go rotten in your paper but if you spray them first with a um, um, there's a I'll have to I'll have to find the name for you but it's uh, what artists use to set their char or, uh, charcoal drawings with I have it in my craft room out inside the house um, you spray that and that it's like a fixative and it should help. I can't guarantee it will like for sure do the trick, but you can try it and see. I, I didn't spray these to be honest, um, so we'll just see what happens. We'll just play a little bit today. So you might think you dip it in with the, this um, inside edge 
you might think you need to dip it in with the flat edge on the bottom but actually we're going to dip it in with the flat edge on top and the frame on top of that and that's what will make the shape of the um, paper. If you do it this way you won't be able to get your paper out. Trust me. <laughs> it happens. Um, this way is much better. Okay. So before you dip your frame in, mix your slurry up. Get it all coming up to the top here. Get your additives in the center a little bit there. And then you go down and up. Down. Flatten it. And up. And then just let it drain. Whoops. Now, I accidentally touched it so I have a hole in it. If you do that, don't worry. Just dip your frame back in. Shake it a little bit. Make sure it, all that slurry gets back into the mix. And that's okay, I actually wanted, ah, wanted to get more of uh, the additives in the mix there anyway. All right, let's try this again. And, oh. You can kind of shift it around to let the water come out each side. Okay, so now we're going to go back over to my table and we're going to dry this out. Okay, so I have my newspaper down. I've got this, it's like a, um, it's, I don't know, it's like an underlayment for carpet or something like that. It's a little bit heavier. I've got my piece of um, felt and I'm going to put down a J cloth. And I take off the top piece, set that aside, and now I'm going to flip it so this the wet side is sitting on the J cloth. take your sponges and you sponge out all that water because there's still lots and lots of water in there. Make sure you especially get around the edges because that's what will help you to get it off the screen. So when you think you've got as much water as possible out, Take a peek under one of the corners and see if you can get it to come. And if it's not, just take your sponge and keep drying it, keep drying it. And if it still won't come off, that's when you get out your little spatula or whatever you got, little knife, and see if you can get it to start to come without ripping. Just gently, gently pull. No, oh, I think this one still has loads of water in it. Do not let it dry on the screen. <laughs> I think it will probably it would tear if you were when you try to get it off. I don't think it would be good. If 
you have trouble getting it off, it might mean that um, it's too thin and you might have to just put it back into the water and try again with more slurry in there. Which might be what's happening here. Or it's just not dry enough yet. get a corner to start, you might have some luck. Just very, very gently pull off the screen. Okay, this top edge is a little mangled, but <laughs> The rest of it came out okay. So now what I would do is go and put this out in the sun to dry. And once it's dry, it'll come off the cloth super easily. So I'll go put that out and we'll do some more sheets. Okay, so I've topped up the slurry with a couple more uh, blenderfuls of paper and I've added some more um, greenery. Mix it all up. See if this one's a little easier to work with. Okay, so that one was um, a little easier because it was thicker and I used uh, this thing which soaks up tons of water. I don't know what it's called. I got it in the mail for free. <laughs> but it works really great. So, um, so just remember this is sort of the back of the paper. All of the greenery and all that stuff, we, all the additives we put in, they're all on the underside right now. So we'll put that out to dry. And when I put it to dry, I'm just going to put it um, just with the J-cloth. To let the, the air kind of circulate all around it. And you should be able to pull two to three sheets of paper out of each batch of slurry. I find, with this size at least, if you're making smaller pieces, you'll get a lot more out of it. Um, and then just add as you go, as you start to see it thin out, add a little bit more slurry. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make a few more pieces. I'm going to add in my, um, oh, there's ants in there. <laughs> I'm going to add in my pine needles and I will show you the results after all my papers are dried out. So I'll just show you one more little trick before I finish up here. If you've um, got some bigger additives like what we have here, what you can do is take a handful of that slurry and put it over top once you've pulled your paper and it will start to embed the, pa the additives in between the layers of the slurry so it's not just sitting right on the top. Now be careful because what will happen if you do what I just did and I just like went uh, all over. I dripped water across my pulled page and then you get what I think are called uh, paper makers tears or something like that um, where you've got blotches in the paper uh, because the water has sort of pushed the slurry over. Um, so just be very careful but you know what I think this is going to be fine because I'm going to squish it all down when I'm drying it out anyway so um, I'm not going to worry about it too much today. I'll just do one more bonus tip. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell but I've added all kinds of uh, more um, stuff to my water. I've got some um, 
flower petals and some salvia and some other little weeds and things and I've added more slurry so but I know I'm not going to get all of this when I pull my piece of paper so what you can do is just add your um, embellishments on the top of your paper uh, if you don't catch it all so let me see if I can show this to you There is a lot in here, so we might get, no, still got a fairly plain piece, even though there's so much stuff in there. So we'll just drain that a bit, and then let me grab some little bits that I want to make sure. So you can just stick them right on and just, oh, that one's too big, I think them in there and just sort of gently tap them down. See if we can get some color on here. And maybe some looks so full in the water and you think you're gonna catch it all but it all just escapes when you pull it up. So there we go, just gently try to embed it in there. And this, I feel like that's too big. Those pieces are way too, <laughs> way too big. gently pull the pulp around the leaf to try to hold it in there. Okay, put one of these in there too. We'll try all that and see, see what happens. So you can do this on a larger scale if you have like one big flower petal or um, like a bigger sprig of something. You can embed it right on top and then um, just lay it in there and gently gently get it to sit inside the pulp. So that's another thing you can try too. Alright, I will be right back with all of our finished papers. Okay, so it's been, I don't know, two or three hours and my papers have been sitting out in the sun baking and they're almost done. Um, oh, there's some silly crows across the street and they won't stop cawing. I don't know what they're on about, but anyway. <laughs> um, they're almost done. You can see I did some smaller ones as well as some bigger ones. I got some more additives in there. Um, I'm going to let these dry completely overnight and then I can show you the end result tomorrow. Well, for you it'll be right away. For me it'll be tomorrow. <laughs> Ta-da! And here are our finished papers. And before we get started, before I forget, I promise to show you the fixative. So this is what I have in my stash. I would get a matte finish. Uh, when I went to purchase this, all they had was gloss, so that's what I had to get. Um, so you could try spraying your em um, embellishment pieces before you put them into your paper. Uh, I'm going to try just spraying my finished papers later on. I'll take them outside and I'll spray them down and it's all an experiment. We'll see what happens. Um, you can uh, go over to my Instagram where I'm Prairie Town Girl and you know, so at some point in time I'm sure I will show you projects with these papers as well as the finished result with the spray. Um, yeah, so these are quite thick papers. Obviously, you can't write on that side. You could probably write on the other side. Um, I've never used a pen with these papers. I, I would think a pencil would work just fine. Maybe some gel pens. I'm not really sure. Um, I like these. 
these ones with the little purple bits in them. And you can see these are the um, pine needles. So yeah, they all sort of start to look a little bit the same after a while. And these three were ones that I just did at the end. They're just plain with nothing in them. And then here are some of the bigger pages. That I think was one of the first ones. Um, I don't know. It, it, it looks like it wouldn't work, but if you think about it in a junk journal where that's one page and that's another page, I think I might be able to work with that. Here's another one where I just placed the little petals, the purple uh, salvia petals all over. This was my very first piece, <laughs> the piece that came undone there. Um, I have another video, I can't remember the name of it, but I will link it up top here, um, where I show you uh, some of my papers that I did before where I used, instead of using natural materials, I used confetti and glitter and stuff like that so you can kind of see some other ways of doing it again that's kind of busy but if you think about it as like a half sheet or in tags or something like that um, I think it'll come in handy so there you go and I'll just mention to finish off um, you'll have a little bit of slurry left at the bottom of your tub when you're done that you can't pull any more paper from because it gets too thin. Um, what I like to do is I let it sit overnight and the, the slurry kind of falls to the bottom and then you can kind of drain, very carefully drain the water off the top and then whatever you do, do not drain it all into, um, you know, like the, the, like, um, the sewer or or you know some place where it's going to clog the pipes don't do that that's not good <laughs> just let it dry and then you can pull it all out or um, you know dump it in uh, you know a, a flower bed or something like that that doesn't hurt anything and, the, and then it um, it breaks down and goes into the ground um, so just you know just be environmentally aware is all I'm saying um, anyways that's how I make my papers and um, if you if you come over to Instagram you'll see how I play with them and have fun with them and um, I'd love to see what you do with yours if you make some paper as well um, yeah so I hope you had fun with that. I know this is a bit of a longer video, uh, but it's a bit of a longer process as well. So anyways, um, have a wonderful, wonderful day and a great week. And stay safe, stay healthy, keep crafting to keep busy. And I will see you all back here very, very soon. Bye.